and welcome back to the Spinner Rack, presented by Comics Remix, Breaking the Fourth Wall. Episode We'll eventually 52. get sound effects. Eventually. Yeah. I'm working on it. You know, here and there, you find something you like. We've just incorporated the beep, <laughs> which was, I guess, ear deafening for you. Like, I ha- yeah. But that, that's now fixed. So if you hear any... I had to fight for that, though. If you hear any f- go f*** yourself, you f***ing f- I purposely just did that so I could put a bunch of beeps. No, I, I figured that. Yeah. Yeah, but it's going to sound stupid now because it's just going to be like beep, 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 eh. Yeah, you're right. Why you got to f***ing ruin it? I don't know. Take advantage of the f***ing beeps. <laughs> now who's taking advantage, you mother <laughs> Did you just gargle? No, I you said gargle. You just try to curse and gargle at the same time. No, there's no cursing and gargling at the same time. We're gonna break right into it. All new, all different Marvel break now. Break right into it. Nice pun there. You like that? Yeah. You see what I did there? No. All new, all different Marvel now. Um, not a whole lot on this. A lot of rumors. Uh, a lot of promo art, which you know, a, a lot of people, including myself, have been led to believe that when Secret Wars is over, we we're gonna get a more streamlined, movie-friendly Marvel universe. And that doesn't look like that's happening. I mean, I think a lot of us called that everything they were doing was going to be rebooted back. Uh, A lot of us assumed that Thor would go back to being Thor. uh, That Captain America would again be Steve Rogers. Uh, That's apparently not happening. Marvel looks to be fully embracing keeping um, Sam Wilson as Cap. Um, Jane Foster as Thor. Jane Foster as Thor. Spoiler alert if you didn't know that already. I think we talked about that though last week. Yeah. Um, which, if you were reading Thor, it was, like, abundantly obvious that's who it was. Yeah. Until the end. Like, the last issue before the reveal, they wagged the dog a little bit and had you thinking it was that S.H.I.E.L.D. agent, and then she shows up in the reveal issue. Yeah. And you realize, oh, well, she can't, can't be her if she, if Thor's right here. Yeah. Sure. They really sure. need to give her a better name. But, Is that what uh, they're seriously calling her? That's what I call her. Oh. Because I don't know what else to call her. She Thor? Lady she Thor? She Thor? Lady Thor? That would be good. Thor? Yeah. I guess I guess I'm just being sexist by not wanting to call her Thor. I, well, I think it's stupid now Thor's become the Odin son. It's like, it just doesn't work for me. Give her her own name. Yeah. Did they call Beta Ray Bill Thor? Very true. You know? Give her, give her a name. Give her a name. But according, or according to, visually, if you look at the promo art... Captain America's still old. Yeah. He's back in the uh, the Steve Rogers shield suit. Mm-hmm. Um, Miles Morales, obviously, as we talked about, part of the 616 now. Yeah. Uh, Iron Man front and center. Uh, they've been speculation on who it was. That speculation, in my opinion, has not been blown out of the water now that we know that Bendis is going to be writing the new Invincible Iron Man, all new, all different Invincible Iron Man, that it is going to be Tony Stark. Um Apparently, the superior thing is going to be gone, but everything in his past is in continuity. Okay. Um, I'm not so sure how I feel about Bendis on an Iron Man title. Uh, I like Bendis, but sometimes, you know, he doesn't do everything perfectly. Right. Well, who does? I'm sure all of us could agree there's some times where you, like, wish Bendis wasn't right. He's like, ah, Bendis is writing it. I mean, who does, though? Yeah, that's true. I mean... I don't know. If there's a lot of Bendis hate out there, I don't see it because I've mm-hmm. liked most of Bendis' stuff. I've liked all new X-Men. I've liked uh, his Spider-Man stuff. I've enjoyed Guardians of the Galaxy. Speaking of Guardians of the Galaxy, it looks like Thing is going to be a member of the Guardians of the Galaxy. Why? In the promo artwork, it's he's shown in a new Guardians of the Galaxy costume. Uh, we already know Johnny Storm's with Ithian humans, and there is no sign of... Of uh, Mr. Fantastic or the Invisible Woman. Hmm. So who knows what will be up with them. Right. But we do know that there are no Fantastic Four books. Correct. Launching in all new, all different Marvel. Um, It looks like, I mean, they're going for diversity. It seems to be the the rally cry of the big two this year is making a more diverse line for, you know, they're, they're listening to the fans and trying to give a more... Uh, a more a wider variety of material for people to ingest. You know, we'll see how it goes, and obviously we'll discuss more as we get more, because we really don't have much. I mean, right now, Secret Wars is awesome, though. I, I love Secret Wars. In more Marvel news, Hugh Jackman 
there's rumors going that he may be in a extra scene in Deadpool. He will not confirm or deny that. He will not confirm or deny whether he will actually be a part of Age of Apocalypse either. Uh-huh. Uh, seeing as that the last Wolverine movie, which he said will be his final appearance as Wolverine, doesn't come out until both those movies will already be out. Yeah. So it's kind of up in the air. Uh, I don't know why he just won't come out and say whether or not he's going to be in it. It kind of doesn't really make a lot of sense to me. Um, Sam Jackson also is apparently not going to be in Civil War. Yeah, what's up with that? Uh, he actually was, was quoted in saying that he didn't know what was going on with that. He doesn't understand it. He's not happy about it. Apparently Nick Fury is dealing with trying to figure out hi, the Hydra thing and, and S.H.I.E.L.D. Mm-hmm. Which, I mean, I don't understand why he wouldn't be in. I feel like he's been a, an integral part of the Marvel Cinematic Universe. Yeah. And for him not to be in what's being billed as Avengers 2.5. Why isn't he there? Uh, his nine picture deal is almost up with Marvel. Yeah. He said he is hoping to expand upon that deal and continue because obviously he's loving being the the man. Because Nick Fury is the man in the Marvel U. Pretty much. Jason Statham was, uh, did I say that right? Jason Statham? Yeah. I felt like I, mis- I screwed it up. Anyway, he was reportedly in talks with Marvel to play Daredevil. Not Daredevil, to play Bullseye, Bullseye. on Daredevil. And, uh,. Fans got really super excited about it. I don't know if you heard anything about it. Um, Put your damn phone down before I break your hand. I'm uh, responding to the email for our guest. Oh. Yeah. I'm not going to say anything then. (laughs) Normally I'd be like, patow! But that's important. We'll talk about that towards the end of the show a little bit. Not really, but we ain't going to tell you. We're just going to tease. So anyway... Everyone's excited. They're like, oh, Jason Statham. And Jason Statham's put some damn good movies See, out Just man. in case you didn't believe me. Some damn right good Right there. Movies. 10 0, Right there. Well, it's off by two hours, but I nice. just replied to him. So. Nice. Good stuff. That would be great. I Man, we've got to bring the A game on that and then some. The A game will be brought. The A game I'm and in, then some. So I basically am. what I said was we're available weekends. You know, July works. We're available weekends. Let us know what weekend works for you and we'll, you know. We'll make we'll make this time for you. I'm just left it at that. Right on, man. That's good. Oh, I'm excited about yeah, that that's one. That's good stuff. Oh, I can't wait to tell you guys. It's got me digging into the back. Yeah, once it's once that's gonna be a great. Once once it's once done, it's locked down. We're gonna like, dude. We gotta make a, a, an image for it. We gotta push it all over social so media. Like, are like we gonna, an image of him with our logo next to it, and be like, he's gonna be on the show. Are we gonna announce it before it's a done deal? Or do you, or you want to wait to announce it after like, it's recorded? Once it's recorded, well, that's a good one. Because I feel like it might shoot ourselves in the foot. Yeah, let's if wait. We're like, oh, we're gonna have this person on, right? And then it just falls through on us. Yeah, let's wait. So we, I think we should wait. We'll wait. That's gonna be great. So sometime coming in July, fingers crossed. Big announcement. The biggest announcement for this show, in the history of this show. Yes, for this show. Yes, for this show. Yes. For this particular show. From the brand, it's a... In my opinion, man, it's a big... Bigger than having Optorotomous Prime. <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah. Because that was such a... Cluster. A f- score. <laughs> Jesus. Is that guy even around anymore? I don't know. Like, honestly, that guy provided provided me with, like, the worst half an hour of podcasting I think I've ever done in my life. Like, I really... <laughs> it's funny, because I sit back, and I remember your face as we were recording, because I'm doing all the talking, and I sit back, and I look, and you're just, like, in your own world. Dude, it was hilarious. Well, like, you if know, you could choke somebody through the yeah, phone. It, it, I sw- <laughs> seriously, if you could, like, digitally reach through and just slap a b- I would have. Because, like, with as much hellfire and fury as that guy brought to your guys' conversation about Hulk Hogan and the Ultimate Warrior... On our Facebook, on the Construx Facebook page, and to just show up, not it will not show up, but to phone in, and literally phone in. You know, yeah. If you know what I, the guy just like I was expecting to like have to mediate, yeah, like an intense debate, and then I had to join Kaput. and I didn't even know about what was what was talking about, <laughs> which sucks because I would so like to like bring that guy back for like. 15 minutes, maybe less, just to put him on blast because now that we did that Hogan versus Ultimate Warrior thing, to revisit that topic, 
I would have in so light much, of everything that's happened. In light of everything that's happened, yeah, would he still have the same views? Yeah, because honestly, I would still be in the same place I am, where I didn't really have much to say about Warrior at the time. I have a lot more to say about him now. Yeah, but my feelings on Hogan are exactly the same. But back to Jason Statham. Let's go, Jason as Statham. Bullseye. How would you have felt with Jason Statham as Bullseye? I would have been good with it, you know, because that brings another, yet another, uh, some more star power to the Marvel universe. Um, people were saying that I don't know if I was talking to you about it, if it was uh, our one fan, Chris Bookout. Um, the book out. The book out. Um, I, I think it might have been him. How he was saying that they were, you know, like they didn't want Jason Statham on there because why give someone with that star power Netflix instead of giving them, you know, national like big screen exposure? Says, well, you got to remember that that ties in to the overall cinematic Marvel universe. You know, and with the success that Daredevil has had, why not put him on there? Right, like, you know? and now who's to say that the Daredevil series doesn't parlay into, like, a movie if they come up with an idea big enough in scope that they just want to blast out? Well, movie? that's what Infinity War is going to be. Avengers Infinity War is supposed to have, like, everything. Like, it's yeah. all out there. All that's the awesome. Netflix characters, all the movie characters, all just all out there. So, in... In the midst of all the fanboy excitement about Jason Statham possibly being Bullseye. I'm good with it. Jason Statham came out and said, that ain't happening. Right. He said, I, I could I could probably pull up the quote here, but uh, Marvel has now also denied, I believe it was some website got all jiggy with it and was <laughs> the one that promoted it happening. Um, and it's obviously not happening. It's just um, one of those things where a website says, hey, you know what? This would be cool. And they put it up, and people caught on to it and thought it was true. And I mean, the butt. He, uh, he pretty much slammed Marvel action scenes. He And I quote, A lot of the modern sort of action movies I see, Marvel Comics sort of things, I just think any guy could do it. I mean, I could take my grandma, put her in a cape, put her on a green screen, and I'll have stunt doubles come in and do all the action. Anyone could do it. I mean, they were relying on stunt doubles, screen, green screens, and a $200 million budget. It's all CGI created. To me, it's not authentic. Well, all right. I guess he won't be part of the Marvel Universe. Yeah, I don't see that happening. On well, either side. And you got to look at a guy, though, that's made his career on doing his own stunts. Yeah. Doing, like, legit work. See, but he's talking about the Marvel Cinematic Universe. Has he watched Daredevil? Because those fight scenes don't look yeah, like they, they're on a green screen. You know, when I read that, and... yeah, when I read that, I thought to myself, is this, he watched this show? Yeah. Because in my opinion, like, the fights in Daredevil... Would be something pulled out of his movies. Have, yeah, they've, they've been amazing. Yeah. They've been amazing. Like, as much as I'm a fan of Arrow, the fight sequences in Arrow... Are like really subpar compared to Daredevil. Oh man. yeah, and not not to take away from anyone that works on Arrow, dude, because I have huge love for Stephen Amell. Mm -hmm. The guy is awesome. I think he's like the type of celebrity that Hollywood needs more of. I love that show. The guy is obviously a beast. I mean, he does crazy, crazy shit. But man, Daredevil just took it to another level. Mm -hmm. I agree. So, uh, no Jason Statham as Bullseye. Oh, well. I'm actually not. That, that doesn't really bother me. I'm more sad that poor Sam Jackson isn't going to be in the new Captain America movie. Yeah, this, that just doesn't make sense. It's, it doesn't. I mean, the guy has been there since the inception of the, of the universe. But do we know for sure he's not going to be in there? Dude, I, I quote, okay, quote, Samuel L. Jackson, quote, I'm not in Captain America 3. I can't figure that out, but I'm not. I guess I'm still out there trying to figure out what happened to S.H.I.E.L.D. and who these other people are. End quote. So. Well, I mean, with all the Civil War casting rumors. Dude, did you hear the latest one about the Hulk? Yeah. It's in the Hulk is coming back. He's supposed to be in Civil War, and so is Red Hulk. What? Because uh, Thunderbolt Ross is uh, in Civil War for sure. So they're saying that they might have him Hulk up. Really? Yeah. And, and that's, uh, I can't remember the actor's name now. But it's the guy that played Thunderbolt Ross in the Ed Norton Incredible Hulk movie? Yeah, yeah. Oh, I can't remember his name. I don't remember his name off the top of my head either. He was the dad in Lost in Space. William Hurt. Yes. William Hurt. Yes. Yeah, no, I hadn't heard that. That's pretty awesome. Yeah. Um, it's. I still feel like it's a humongous shame that 
that they're not going to put Sam Jackson in. But here's my thing. Look at the full cast already. Are you going to have... Well, they said Falcons in Civil War. But are you going to have Vision? Are you going to have Scarlet Witch? You know, just because of the new Avengers team? You know, is Widow going to be in it? I think Widow has to be in it. Yeah. I've been wanting to rewatch Winter Soldier for a while now. That movie's so great. It's so great. That is like the one Marvel movie I have watched. That's like not a Marvel movie. Over... <laughs> Wait. It's a Marvel movie. It's it's an action movie that okay. just happens to star superheroes. Yeah, Heroes. totally. No, totally. That and Guardians of the Galaxy are probably my two favorite Marvel movies. Guardian, Guardians, Winter Soldier, and both Avengers are my top four. And the yeah, first see, Iron Man. I, I wouldn't put Age of Ultron in my top four. Oh. I was not... Eh. Eh. I haven't even seen it again. Me neither. I just... I just you know, time. I don't have time. I mean... Just, I'm just not interested. It just, I mean, there were parts of it I liked. Yeah. But there was a lot, like, you know, you could, I'm not going to go through what we did on the review show. If you really want our review, you could listen to the review of it. But it's, eh, eh. So, uh, Aquaman has a new director. It is James Wan, director of Fast and the Furious. No, no interest in Aquaman at all? Wow. Why not? Like, dude, I'm telling you, man, I'm not on board with any of the DC stuff. Just, really? Yeah, just, it doesn't care. Like, nothing they've announced has caught my eye. Nothing they have announced has caught my attention. Now, Jason Momoa looks, that promo poster looked really cool, though, as Aquaman. But, I mean, other than that, Batman versus Superman, I've got to wait and see. Yeah, like, so me, until I, I get something of substance. And that's not even including Man of Steel, because Man of Steel, you know, that's like saying you're excited for the Marvel Universe just based off the first Iron Man movie. You know, you kind of can't really, because you don't know what's coming. Yeah. You know, like, I loved Iron Man, but I didn't know what was coming. I did too. Same thing, I love Man of Steel, but I don't know what's coming. Right. So until I get something there, it's like, whatever, it's, DC's throwing too much out there at once, you know? It's, it's like I I'm said. not going to sit here and, and compare the Marvel to DC like all the fanboys do, you know, like, oh, Marvel this or DC that. No, it's, it's, it, it's, it's there. You know, the facts are there. Marvel has the track record. They tried one movie at a time, one movie, and they didn't go ahead and announce seven movies with no, nothing, you know, to, no substance to it. Right, You know, right. they're like, well, we're going to try this movie. Oh, and then this movie. Oh, and then this movie. Okay, we're there. Now we can announce two or three movies. Right. Whereas DC's like, no, we're doing all this. With nothing to fall back on besides Man of Steel. So I'm like, no, I just... Until you show me something... It's a mistake, you know. I mean, obviously... I'm waiting for Ninja Turtles 2. I get, the more that comes out about that, the more excited I am about seeing it. Yep. I'm still not that excited. I'm still more excited to see that than I am the new Fantastic Four or Suicide Squad. Which we poo-pooed the hell out of last week. Yeah. Um, you know, you're right. DC at this point, they shouldn't be announcing anything. They shouldn't have announced that they're doing Wonder Woman. They shouldn't announce it. They should have just, like, left it all to speculation and been like, oh, we're doing the Superman versus Batman movie. Come see what it is. Get a taste of the flavor. And then, why not on the heels of B versus S being released, be like, we're doing all these movies now. Yeah. We're doing Aquaman, we're doing Wonder Woman, we're doing... But they're just like... They're literally... I said this in a, in a Facebook comment on someone's post. I feel like DC slash Warner Brothers is literally throwing at the wall to see what will stick. Yeah, pretty much. I mean, and the Suicide Squad literally just sells that statement because it looks like Yeah. I, you know, I have hopes for Batman vs. Superman. I want it to be good. I want to really like it. But like you said, really can't pass that judgment until that movie comes out and we see it. So until then, you're kind of like, uh. But anyway, so James Wan, Furious 7, billion dollar movie, directing Aquaman, also directing Robotech. Hmm. Super, super excited about the possibility, again, that there's going to be a Robotech movie. I have felt... But it's Sony, though, isn't it? It is Sony. Look what they did with Spider-Man. Yeah, but who gives a it's it's but this is I'm not worried about it. Spider Man's a different animal than Robotech. I mean, they, there's nothing really to you know. Well, uh, Sony hasn't done a horrible job with Spider Man. It hasn't done a horrible job. Sony has done things with Spider Man that were good, but they did a lot of shit that was bad. Yeah. 
Now, Robotech, Robotech is a property I felt like, man, ever since Independence Day came out, which one was that? Like in the 90s? Pretty much, yeah. I have felt like when I saw that movie, I, I literally remember thinking, holy sh- they can make a Robotech movie. <laughs> and now it's been 20 years. Yeah. 15 years at least. They need to make it. And I don't necessarily feel like they need to stick to to the material. It would be smart from the perspective of a fan. You want, you know, to, to stick to some somewhat of the material. Man, I don't care. Like, like this is... This is one of those things where, like, Michael Bay could produce this movie, and I'd be f***ing excited about it. <laughs> because this is the type of movie that needs that type of Michael Bay shit. Yeah. That needs all the crazy explosions. Like, this is the movie. J.J. Abrams, man, give us those starbursts. Thing. Like, do it, man. Do it. <laughs> like, this is the opportunity to get off a of cinematic <laughs> I'm going to have to bleep that, aren't I? I don't know. Yeah. Yeah? Yeah. But I'm super excited about that. What can I say, man? I'm excited. More exciting news. Justice League Gods and Monsters. The reuniting of the original Batman the Animated Series team led by Bruce Timm on some uh, finally original animated material out of DC. It's a new, completely new take on the, on the Trinity. Superman is now the son of Zod. Really? So it's not... Yeah, they're, they're totally going non-traditional with it. Wonder Woman comes from the warring nation of Ares... And Batman is Dr. Kirk Langstrom, who has turned himself into a vampire trying to cure his cancer. So they went with a whole different take on these characters. But it's like, Bruce Tim. But it's Bruce Tim. And this is an animated feature? Yep. I'm down. It's an animated Dude, I have feature. Not and last, it's going to be a web series. The last DC animated feature I watched was Flashpoint Paradox. Yeah. That was the last one I bought. That was the last one I watched. I fell so behind on those things. And then DC has just like left Marvel in the dust when it comes to that. When it comes to the animated, yeah. And there's been so many I've wanted to watch. I've um like the, that's the Batman and Son I wanted to watch. I've I have not watched the, the Throne of Atlantis. I've not watched, you know, like the last five or six. Like I said, Flashpoint Paradox was the last one I watched, last one I I, I was like, man, that was really good. It was pretty faithful to the story from what I remember. It was it was pretty close. It was close enough. It was more faithful to the story than Throne of Atlantis was, or Batman and Son, okay. or Court of Owls, which I haven't watched. Me neither. But I, it's, it seems to me that like uh, Court of Owls. Oh, I'm sorry. It's not called Court of Owls, is it? This is Batman and Robin, it's, isn't it? Isn't it Batman versus Robin? Something like that. Well, they've taken elements of the Batman versus Robin story and the Court of Owls story and kind of mixed it all together. In one. Which was a mistake, in my opinion. I feel like they could have just, like, separated that and yeah. it been good to stand on its own. I don't know why DC feels the need to mix elements. DC needs to redo Death of Superman. Absolutely. Give me the, the, the 90s comic yeah, version. Yeah, totally. You know, Absolutely. Start it off with, you know, Doomsday coming to Earth and Superman already part of the... Ju- or knowing the Justice League, you know, because Superman wasn't part of the Justice League back then. It was, like, the... Just League B team or C team. It was like international. Like. Yeah. It was like so, that weird black guy version of Martian Manhunter, mm-hmm. Guy Gardner, Blue Beetle, Booster Gold. Yeah. Pretty much Justice League International. Yeah. Give, give me that. Start it off with that. Yeah. With Doomsday absolutely. coming. Or, you know, and then, you know, within the first 45 minutes, you kill Superman. Maybe half hour. You know, and then from there, you start the reign of Superman. You know, give me. You know, they who could says, two-part it. Yeah, the way they, they did Dark Knight it, Returns. Yeah. You know, who they says totally that two-part uh, either two-part it or, you know, give it a two-hour treatment. You know? I didn't like the animation in that one either. Superman had some weird cheekbones. I was not a fan of that either, the animation. I also wasn't a fan of... Uh, I actually owned that one twice. That's sad, isn't it? I owned I bought, it. And I bought I, the DVD and then I found the Blu-ray at five below for five bucks. So yeah, see, if I found that on Blu-ray, I'd buy it for five bucks just because I'm a completist and yeah. I have all almost all of them. So. New Frontier was good. I got that one. New Pub- Frontier was like one of my favorites. I didn't watch Superman Public Enemies, Superman Batman Public Enemies, Superman Shazam, I think I rented it. I don't know if I own it. Wonder Woman, I really enjoyed. So honestly, I believe it was episode, I actually looked it up. You can go back on our YouTube page, the Spinner Rack issue... 36 and 37, we actually discuss every single 
DC animated feature that to was that out point. to that point. Yeah. And we went through how we we lamented on why Doomsday wasn't just a legit straight, like, just do it. Do it. Right. Why does Chris, Chris book out, you just text me, why do you always think we film? I don't know. He, he asked me yesterday, he's like, what time are you guys filming? And he listens to the show. Yeah. And he just texts me right now, he says, y'all filmed already? You southern hick. We don't film. We record. So <laughs> now you're gonna you're gonna insult Southerners. No, he is a Southerner. You're saying just him. Just him. Okay. I'm just alienating him. Good for the clarification. So yeah, Gods and Monsters movie, web series, and a prequel comic book, digital first. I'm super excited about it. Right. Especially knowing that it's Bruce Tim. And the original team that did Batman the Animated Series. I guarantee you he's asking because he's going to be like, did you post it yet? Which is still, probably. You're like, nope, you got to wait till Wednesday now. You have to upset him. <laughs> That's going to be great. And the final thing I want to talk about on this week's Breaking the Fourth Wall, DCU. So DCU is upon us. Not DCU, but DCYOU. This, it's pretty much the same thing with Marvel now. I really, I got the DC books for this week. I haven't read any of the new stuff, but... You know, there it's the same spiel. <laughs> the talk. Okay, what are you laughing about? Chris wants you to do a, another uh, reference this week. Not Goonies, but uh, Biff. I'm guessing Back to the Future Biff. Seriously? Yeah. I don't even know what to do. He said, uh, gonna tell you to get Brian to do a Biff reference. So I asked him, I was like, Back to the Future? It's like, it's like some, hello McFly! Yeah, that's all I got. That's all he's getting. So 24 new books. That will change the future of the DC. I don't know why I said the. It just says, quote, There's a lot of energy and effort being put into making this happen, the Dio said. When we started the move from the East Coast to the West Coast, we knew we wanted to hit the ground hard. This week really captures the diversification of the line. It's a good snapshot, but it's just the tip of the iceberg for all the things we have coming in June. Everything about Convergence is a transition, the Dio said. It's a celebration, but really transitioning to the next phase it was the last epic story from an editorial team based in New York City. The deal, there was absolutely nothing epic about that storyline. Raging hunk of shit. We are broadening the horizons of what we publish, Jim Lee said. We're bringing in fresh new voices from the creator pool. We are publishing different kinds of artwork you may not have found traditionally published at DC. We are welcoming old fans and new fans to that experience. Lee continued, when we did the new 52, we knew it brought in a lot of new readers. What we've seen in the four years since is that there were a lot of readers out there who didn't necessarily have big voices in our industry. Female readers, the LGBT community, we have this amazing universe to tell lots of diverse stories. We feel that the future is our business. It's not going to just happen naturally. I think if our goal is to mirror the diversity that is our readership, we need to move with some speed and some sense of purpose. Um, yeah, isn't that what the New 52 was supposed to do? Yeah. I get the what they're whole... saying, though. They don't want to, like... I think what happened with New 52 is they pigeonholed themselves into being so streamlined that they had to eliminate a lot of other stuff, which gave them opportunities to tell other things. But, I mean, if that's the case, they could have just revived Elseworlds and been like, here, everything else takes place here. Instead of giving us this crappy event. You know, but... yeah, you know, what it, it is what it is. I mean, if it, if it allows, honestly, whether Convergence was good or bad is not the point here. If it allows for the comic company to expand and being able to tell all multitudes of stories that we kind of had when we were growing up and we didn't really have to worry about continuity. It was like a good story is a good story and it gives more outlets to these writers and these artists because every day you go online and you see a new writer, a new artist trying to break into the industry and if they all have original ideas that are going to help comics and push comics into another 20, 30, 40 years, so be it. You know, then kudos to DC. No, absolutely. I mean, if that's what happens... The line looks pretty diverse. Yeah. They've done a lot of things that I felt like were missteps when the New 52 initially launched Starfire. Problems and issues with Starfire, as originally conceived in the New 52, have obviously been addressed in DCU. Which were what? Refresh my memory. Though she's basically a whore. Oh, yeah. You know, it's like, oh, every time we see her, it's TNA. Yeah. She's got like a much more, you know... Um, it's the uniforms class. Yeah. Very skimpy. It's very in line with everything that Marvel's been doing with all their female heroes. Yeah. Well, Starfire's outfit's always been a little bit skimpy. Not, I, I think in the, in the 80s, it was a bit more to it. And then more current times, it got a little bit thinner. Yeah. But I see what you mean. So, I mean, yeah, we'll see. 
you know what I thought about? It's like, it's funny because you look at the drawings of these superheroes and you're like, man, you know, some of these outfits are pretty revealing. You know, both for guys and girls. You know, like, guys running around with all these abs and these huge bulges and the chicks running around with their chests hanging out, you know, and walk, running around in thongs and stuff. And then you're like, it's, it like, it looks okay on paper. But then when you look at it in person, like somebody cosplaying it or something, like, holy crap, that chick's walking around half naked. You gotta wonder, if this was like, if superheroes were real, what would be the perception? Right. You know? I don't know, just my two cents on that. Because we're talking about Starfire's outfit. I could dig it. I could dig it. But I mean, oh, I meant to mention this during the beginning of the all new, all different. Apparently there's a new She-Hulk. Okay. And they're not saying who it is. But there's speculation that She-Hulk's going to be transgender. So does that mean that the new She-Hulk, when she's not She-Hulk, is actually a guy? I... That bothers me. Why turn... And nothing against transgenders or gays or lesbians, nothing like that. But why turn an already established character into some... Uh, oh, no, they're, they're, like Jennifer that? Walters is still going to exist. Right. It's a new She-Hulk. Oh, so it's a second one. Yeah. Okay, okay. All right, I misunderstood. I was going to say, yeah. If that's the case, then why not just create a new character? Yeah, no, it is a whole okay, new character. Okay, okay, It's a whole new character. It was just one of those things that I forgot to mention earlier. Also, Daredevil's going back to, like, an almost Shadowland-looking costume. Oh, yeah. Where it's black with red highlights. Okay. So, I mean, there's a lot of weird things in the comic book industry, as always. We will give you our two cents, because we're fans, and that's what this show is fans talking about our fandom i mean yeah we don't you know i've stated before we're not a news outlet we don't report the news unless it's something that we find actually find out first and yeah of course why not right Mm -hmm. but you know we're fans stuff gets reported all day by other websites and other media outlets and it's like hey you know what that's all well and good you reported it let's talk about it you know that's what this is that's what it's always been that's what it always will be and that's this week's episode of Breaking the And after the that, I feel wall. like, and like flip yeah. the table and get all crazy. It's like, like I got to defend myself. Breaking Yeah. So yeah, change.org. Go sign that petition. JDF versus CM Punk. Um, whether you're a fan of JDF, whether you're a fan of CM Punk, whether you're not a fan of either and you're a fan of ours, it would help us. Or just a friend that check hasn't out, already shown the support. Check out our other Spinner Rack Click show. The uh, the Lockup, where Brian and I discuss everything wrestling. Check out Reviews Remixed by Alex Martinez, where he sits there and reviews all the latest and greatest toys that catch his eye. Um, there's a new show coming up pretty soon. It'll be another podcast hosted by myself and by Alex, and that'll be a once-a-month thing. I'm not giving any details on that yet. Um, we got uh, um, our first uh, big-name comic veteran, hopefully being on the show pretty soon. We're trying to schedule that. That's what I was uh, referencing earlier when I says I'm getting back to back to him um we're not letting any clues out to who it is um i will i guess i can be pretty vague and say the only thing i can i can give away is that this person um works for one of the big two you know i mean i can be anybody right so and has um, a lot of independent work as well which also can be anybody which could also be anybody so um we're not even say, stating whether this person is a writer or an artist that's mm-hmm. that i'm not even going there um but uh, hopefully, you know. Once that recording has taken place, and we will in the books, we will pimp the hell out like, of this. The day that we get together to record that interview, we will also get together to record this show, and on that show, we will officially announce. Yeah. That it's coming. Yeah, and then we'll start seeing all the posts and stuff yeah. on our social media. Website still being worked on, um, as we stated. Uh, we all have personalized. We do this because we're fans. We don't get paid for it. You know, we do it in our spare time. Um, which, it, you know, th- Brian's a family man. I'm a family man. Um, you know, I just got a promotion at work, so... We're toy whores. <laughs> <laughs> like, I feel like your toy whoring is what I was back in, like, seventh grade. Like, we're on two completely different levels yeah, right now. Yeah, you're, like, like a book out got to experience. It's another... You're at a frightening level. That, dude, I read that post and I'm dying. He was like, man, Edric and Junior are on, like, two... Like, an entire... Dude, when you have to toy hunt out of state because you're just tired looking at the same stuff and you come back from out of state with a bunch of stuff that you're just like if yes. i had the money or the surplus of that you possess to trade yeah because for other dude, stuff all of the stuff i ended up bringing back with me i spent ten dollars on and it was because i bought that harley pop at a uh, gamestop 
Everything else was trade. You're lucky. I even had a trade left over that I gave something to Chris. You're a lucky. Got him that Play Arts uh, Bane figure. Yeah, which now he's trying to sell or trade. Yeah, he texted me that this morning. I was like, dude, you suck. Not even 24 hours. Yeah, I, I, I kind of wonder. I was like, you know what I could have done with that store credit? I could have bought myself some Blu-rays. Book out, comment on this video. Do you ever buy anything that you just keep for yourself that's not Deathstroke or Arrow related? <laughs> well, that's the thing. He wants to trade it for the Play Arts Deathstroke. Oh, is that what it yeah. is? Right on. So, I mean, I guess I could forgive him for that, you know? Yeah. But whatever. Well, that's this week's Breaking the Fourth Wall. Yeah. Um, Alex has posted two new toy reviews over Reviews Remixed. Um, he had to skip a week or two because of work. But he's got two new ones up right now, and uh, he's going to get the ball rolling on bringing them back out uh, every nice. Friday and stuff. So we should be back to our regular schedule. Good stuff. So, yeah. So, yeah, as always, you've seen, we flip schedules now. The lockup will now be on Mondays. Because Monday is wrestling night. Right, to better accommodate the wrestling the fans. The wrestling thing. And then uh, Wednesdays, like today, a new comic book day, so why not put out the comic news? Like, I have always originally wanted it. That's how me and David used to do it back in the day. Yeah, see, I don't know why we just didn't do that from the go. I have no clue. It's because you f it up. Yeah, I'm fine. F it up. Yep, yeah, I'll take credit. Good. It's all right. Good man. I'm gonna go play with all my toys. Yeah. Play with them. I'm just gonna you're those and post them. You're just gonna up. look at them. I'm gonna post them all up and tag you and all of them. And like, fondle the boxes. Like booyah. See, you got issues, son. Thanks for that Joker pop, by the way. You got though. issues. Yeah. Bloomquist ain't getting it. Good luck. I'm gonna put it on my. Uh, you I'm guys, gonna... you guys can fight for it. I'm like Bloomquist, put it on my tab, yo. <laughs> he might overcharge you for it. Yeah. Be right. careful. Right. 20 bucks. Don't let him get any more than that. That's, <laughs> that's breaking the fourth wall. We'll see you next week.